morning, welcome to Roadrunners. If you're wondering where I am, I am by the angel, yesterday's angels, looking for clues of where I'm going to find today's angels. Hope you've all been managing to find them. I've got some swans down there, there they are for company. We're all going to go and have a look. And while I go and look for today's angels, I'm going to very quickly pass you over to Charlie, who's got some exercises for you, and then on to Phil. And then I'll be back at the end to tell you if I found the angel, and also tell you about some of the other stuff coming up. Have a good day. Hello and welcome to some fun exercises. So this one that we're going to do is called an animal game. And I want you to think of all the different things that you know animals do. So the first animal is a frog. So I want you to quickly tell the person next to you, what do you think a frog does? Can you show them what a frog looks like? So we're going to get into a frog position. So if I shout out frog to you, you have been jogging and you're going to get down into a frog position like this and you're just going to jump on the spot like a frog. So quickly show the person next to you, show one member of your family how you can be a frog. <gasps> Amazing. So the next animal we're going to come on to is a cheetah. And what are cheetahs really great at? Running. So if I shout cheetah, you're going to run as fast as you can. Or if you've got lots of space like me, you're going to run in all the space that you've got. So the next animal we come onto is an elephant. And we all know elephants have nice long trunks. And they're also really good at marching. So if I say the word elephant, you're going to go like this. So you're going to be marching around but of your nice long elephant trunk and I want you to have a think about what animals else you could be so what would a bear do what would a gorilla do what would a unicorn do because they are an animal so what's your favorite animal and what would they do so we're just going to play a little game and you've got to be the animal so frogs jump like this Cheetahs run round, elephants have nice long trunks. You ready to join in? Okay, so just jogging on the spot and show me a frog and jump up and down. And then jogging on the spot and show me your elephant. And jogging on the spot and show me your cheetah. Keep running. And now I want you to show me your favorite animal. So what would your favorite animal do? Is it a monkey? Is it a bear? What is your favorite animal? Okay, so we're gonna go again. And this time, I'm not going to join in. You're going to do it just by yourself. Ready? Take a deep breath. And jogging around the room. And elephant. And jogging around the room. Frog. So jumping up and down. And jogging around the room. And cheetah. So you've got to run as fast as you can. Jogging around the room. Elephant. Jogging around the room. Frog. How many jumps can you do? Jogging around the room. Elephant. Jogging around the room. Frog. Hello everyone. I'm here with the Roadrunner Stativity Set. Now it seems to be missing a few characters, doesn't it? But it is accurate to where we are in our Christmas story. Before Christmas, it was just a stable with a few animals and the manger is just a food container for them rather than the special centerpiece it will become. Now, how are preparations going for Christmas in your house? It's now less than three weeks. Can you believe it? We haven't got our decorations up in our house yet, but I bet some of you have. I've seen lots of houses that have had them up for weeks already looking to bring some early Christmas excitement 
in what has been a difficult year with all the Covid restrictions. And although this year will be a bit different, we are still celebrating what happened over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born. Now, this week's nativity character is on the edge of that first Christmas story. In fact, we don't have a figure for him in the set, and he tends to feature in the long version of the story, and not the version that is in lots of nativity plays in schools and churches. Have you got any ideas who I might be talking about? Let me give you some more clues. He's quite old, he lives with his wife, and they haven't got any children. He works as a priest in the temple. Can you guess? Well done if you did. Anyway, his name is Zechariah, and his wife, Elizabeth, was Mary's cousin. Let's look at his story. You can find it in the Bible, in Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 25. Zechariah was a good man. He loved to pray as he helped in the temple in Jerusalem, but he was sad because he had no children. One day, while he was busy in the temple, the angel Gabriel suddenly appeared in front of him with a message from God. You and your wife Elizabeth will soon have a baby boy. You must call him John, said the angel. This can't be true, said Zechariah. We are far too old to have a child. To show that God has sent me, said the angel, you will not be able to talk until the baby is named John. Now, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, her cousin Mary came to visit her. As Mary called out, Elizabeth's baby in her tummy was so excited, he began to jump with joy. And then later, just as the angel had said, Zechariah could not talk until his baby was born. When he wrote, his name is John. Suddenly, Zechariah could speak again. Baby John grew up to tell everyone to get ready for the coming of God's son Jesus as the saviour of the world. He's the John that we know as John the Baptist. When I read stories in the Bible, I like to imagine how I would have felt or behaved if I was in their situation, and then think about what I can learn from their story. Zechariah was old, and he'd been a priest for a long time. He would have had to know an awful lot about God to do his job in the temple. But when the angel came and spoke to him, he did not believe what he was told, even though he knew about all the amazing things that God had done in the Bible. Just think about all the amazing things God did for people like David, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Daniel, and all the others that we read about. But would I have believed the angel if I was Zechariah? If I'm honest, I'm not sure if I would. So like Zechariah, I would have been unable to speak for months. Maybe that would be a good thing. And that, I think, is the challenge of this story. Lots of us know the Christmas story and other stories in the Bible really well. Shepherds and stars, donkeys and wise men, and a special baby in a manger. But God wants to talk to us about more than the events of 2000 years ago. He wants to talk to us about our lives now in 2020 and he wants to help us share that with other people too. Although this Christmas is going to be a bit different and we don't have all the same activities that we have had in the past, and I'm sure we'll have again, there are still lots of activities to get involved with that you could invite friends to take part in. Have you found any angels in the angel hunt? Have you looked at our online advent calendar? Are you looking forward to our online Christingle or whole church nativity service? If not, chat to your parents about them and maybe think about who you could invite to these things so that we can share the important message of that first Christmas. So finally got back home. Took me ages to find today's angel, but I found it in the end. I'm not going to give you clues though. You've got to go find it yourself. Thank you, Phil, for covering for me. Thank you, Charlie. I've heard what Phil said actually. I was listening as I was walking around and brilliant challenge how are you going to spread the good news what are you going to tell someone because it is some good news that we have the joy of telling people so i'm going to go get warmed up because it's cold i will see you later have a good week do the advent calendar do the angels and we'll see you soon bye